Good morning and welcome back to the Peak District. My name is Caroline and I am here for a few days with my other half Andy who is off taking some photographs because we've woken up to this like misty almost foggy start this morning. In fairness trying to drive across the Peak District National Park was very challenging given how thick the fog was but the area that we've come to this morning it's a lot more misty rather than foggy and the sun's just starting to burn through it slightly. The idea is is today we're going to be going for a walk up onto the Roaches which is where we've parked really close to. It's free laid by parking. We were a little bit worried that we might have struggled to get parked but actually there was plenty still available at about half past eight in the morning on the Easter bank holiday weekend. We are hoping to get up as far as a place called Ludd's Church because that looks like it is quite spectacular. We might come back via Hen's Cloud as well, but we'll just kind of see how today takes us. We're following one of the walks on the National Park's website, but it doesn't seem to give us an indication as to how you can get from where we've parked up the car to join the main trail. I think what then confuses it even more is this area seems to be very popular with people who are rock climbing and bouldering. And so you've had people going off in different directions and we're trying to gauge it and we're like, oh, they seem to have things like helmets and the ropes to go rock climbing. Even though they're going off in an opposite direction, we don't think that we want to be following them. But at the same time, up there, I can see people walking across the ridge line and it's very much a scrambly rock face with moss that I imagine is gonna be very, very slippy. But I'm just hoping if we keep on going up this gentle slope we will actually get to where we're supposed to be. <laughs> We just drove through loads of fog this morning in some of the other valleys so it's just made the sun a little bit softer but it's slowly burning through all the fog so when you get in the backlit come through on the the, the leaves of the trees it's great for photography. Success! This path is joining us on to the main one. <laughs> We've got ourselves up and over that ridge and it isn't much of a plateau, it actually dips back down a little bit on the other side but the fog and mist that's behind me is really starting to give a bit of an idea as to the levels that we were having to drive through this morning when I was trying to explain it quite badly from where we parked up. The other really nice thing about this area is that I can definitely hear the call of some kind of bird, something that I'm definitely not familiar with out into the distance. And when we first came through the gate, there was a wildlife trust sign that was explaining that there's a couple of different types of birds. I know one is the peregrine falcon, which I got very excited about when we hiked Walla Creek in the Lake District thinking that we'd seen one but upon viewing the footage later on we realized that it wasn't one so it would be awesome if we could get to see one of those today. And there was another bird and I can't quite remember the name of it now. Yesterday when we were hiking up at Kinder Scout we didn't really get an awful lot of wildlife. There was a very awesome looking moth right up on the top of the plateau. And I think the only other thing that we saw was just a pheasant down in the valley right at the very end. So I'm hoping that today we might get a little bit more lucky with the wildlife. I'll be the first to hold up my hands and say we have walked a pitiful distance but I think it's that this scenery is so unique up in the clouds which I think is ironic because where we are at the moment is called the five clouds part of the hike. We've come along this beautiful tarn which is called Doxley's Pool but it does seem like there's an awful lot of erosion that's been going on with the peat and so the National Park have put up some ropeways to make sure that we stay on the correct side of it and there's a lot of signs asking wherever possible that we stay on the footpath. We just feel like we keep on stopping and we're wanting to photograph things and film things. It really is gorgeous up here. We've been my 
mighty lucky this weekend with the weather. We've obviously booked it ages in advance to get a good deal on a hotel with it being the bank holiday weekend. But the weather yesterday was nice. Today it just feels glorious. And one of the things that the National Parks website did say is that because we're up on this exposed ridge, particularly with quite the cliff drop off on that side, it does mean that it can be quite chilly when the wind picks up and when the weather isn't particularly warm. So we've got really lucky today. We do have layers packed in our bags, but we're just not needing them. This is gorgeous. <laughs> I don't know if it's just luck on our side, but the National Parks website really clearly said this is a very popular hike, so you might want to either get here very early or come midweek. I wouldn't say we got here that early, and yet it's been beautifully quiet. Just as we got up onto this plateau, I think we'd gotten in between a very, very large group of people, quite a loud large group of people. But other than them, it's just been the odd one or two people who we've seen up here. So we've definitely gotten lucky from that respect. But the other really great thing is, because of how popular this trail is, I think the National Park have really tried to upkeep the paving. So there's stepping stones where it gets a little bit peat boggy just to help prevent any kind of erosion so I feel like we're getting the benefits of it being a really popular trail through so being very well maintained but at the same time we're not having to fight against crowds and it's about quarter to 11 so we figure time for 11 seas got some homemade flapjack that we've brought up from home just sit and eat it on, on the trick point because it's lovely and quiet there's only one other person up here at the moment i'm assuming we drove down we are now dropping off of the ridge line and whilst we've heard the bird song the whole way we've just not really seen any of the impressive birds one thing that is quite interesting is that there's a range of birds that nest actually on the ground around here so the signs that we were reading were asking that dog owners keep their dogs on a leash from april through to august just to help stop dogs from disturbing those nests on the ground We've kept seeing people clambering up onto rocks doing really nice poses standing up and I said oh we really need to do one ourselves and so we chose this one. Of course we would choose this one. The one with questionable graffiti over it. I don't really remember us having to climb up that much in order to get up onto that ridge line but right now I am very aware as to just how quickly we are descending down towards Ludd's church so it'll be interesting to see how this hike ends because I think there's going to be an epic uphill climb. I think as we've just come down from such a great height that even though we're in amongst the trees and so it's a little bit shaded it's actually really really warm probably also helps with the fact that the day's going on so naturally it just heats up a little bit so i think i need to be losing this fleece and you know i had all of these layers and i don't think i'm really going to need them today or hopefully i'm not going to need them today <sighs> the woods they're nice, they're all right. I suppose we have woods at home that are not too dissimilar to this. So it's not quite as exciting as being up on the ridge, but if it does mean that it's gonna get us to Ludd's Church, then that is no problem at all, because that's the part of this walk that I think I'm most excited about. We often say that we try and eat lunch somewhere with a beautiful view, but it's been a little bit lacking once we've come off of that ridge. So just before we descend down into Ludd's Church, we're just going to stop here because we're not in South Catered. We've just ended up going and getting a Tesco's meal deal, three quid, chicken and chorizo. It 
it definitely looks popular. We've had so many group as well as we've been eating our lunch. And my thought is, it's down there where it's a lot more shaded than just the dappled sunlight from the trees. It's probably gonna be a bit chillier. And because obviously we've stopped for lunch, the birds stopped pumping quite as much. So I'm already just starting to feel it a little bit. I've been for worse because it is gorgeous weather for Easter. I suppose it's been so late this year, but I'm quite excited to get down into there now. Well, the canyon was very, very short-lived. I just assumed that it was gonna be quite lengthy, but it really wasn't at all. Pretty much everything that you have seen that I've filmed, it makes up Blood's charge. Incredibly muddy, so I certainly wouldn't be coming in flimsy shoes. And on the bank holiday weekend, incredibly busy as well, but really cool and like nothing else that we've seen so far. We're now just walking away from Ludd's church, the woods that it, we came out into disappeared quite quickly. And it's weird because the last trip that we actually took, I've not been doing these videos in order, the last one that we took was to Jordan and we went and hiked through what was known as Wadi Gwir, much longer than Ludd's church. And even though obviously that was in the desert, it was very much orange rocks and it was very dry, except for when the riverbed came through. When we got into the oasis, it was like those hanging gardens of greenery coming off of the cliff faces. And it was exactly the same there. And there was also a little hint of Lydford Gorge. We're now walking along a very different path to everything that we've experienced so far on this hike. I feel like I've not really said anything to camera in a little while and I think it's just because this ridge has been a little bit similar to what we walked along first thing this morning but without the level of excitement I suppose. It's a little bit breezy but to be honest it's quite nice. I'm saying this is the sun has gone behind a cloud. The sun is quite strong when it comes out so the breeze is nice that we're getting up here. I think at this time of the year it's not overly exciting. You've got farmer's wall on one side and then heather that's yet to flower on the other side but similar to yesterday I bet in the summer it's spectacular. church so quick five minute google search um i was trying to be all sarcastic because i didn't have any signal i was like oh if i raise my arm up and it actually works <laughs> back in the 15th century it was used as a place of worship and there was a chap called walter de ludank i think it was and the lud from ludank was taken and then the church part from the fact that it was used as a place of um, worship and that's where the name Ludd's Church then comes from. I think Andy was a bit disappointed that there wasn't actually a church there. <laughs> This route back takes you over the Black Brook using a really small footbridge. Reading the walk's instructions, I think I was getting quite excited, thinking that it was going to look very pretty, but it was a bit ugly and I think just there to serve its purpose. But the one thing that I couldn't help but notice is that the water is actually flowing away from us. This means that we must be having to walk gently up following this brook. And that is exactly what we're doing at the moment. But my issue is, is that now when I look down on the other side of this stone wall, there is quite a dip between where we are at the moment and that brook and then obviously you've got the ridge line that we were walking on this morning and then our car is parked on the other side of that so I'm still not entirely convinced of Andy saying oh don't worry we won't have that much uphill climbing to do at the end so I'm really not too sure how we're going to be able to get over there.
come across a bathtub in a farmer's field. In fairness, it's filled with water and whilst there is a rock in there, I think if we were to remove that, people pay a lot of money to do this kind of glamping, don't they? Where they sit in these bathtubs in a farmer's field. Just remove it, do it for free. Or maybe we could start charging people. National Park's website did say that we just wanted to keep on walking, keeping that brook on our right hand side. But that said, if we didn't have our OS map with us at the moment, I would be very, very worried. I think we'd be completely lost. So if you're watching this because you're planning on coming and doing this circular hike, I would strongly recommend not just using the National Parks website, make sure that you've either got the OS map or uh, OS app to be able to follow it because this has been difficult. All of everything that you can see behind me, around that farmer's house and everything, getting up to this point, it, it's been really, really tricky. <laughs> throwing up my hands at this point and I'm admitting defeat. Don't get me wrong, this hike has been spectacular. This morning up on that ridge with all of the fog dispersing and then Lud's church, even though it was shorter than what I was expecting, it was a real treat. And there's been other pockets of this hike that have also been really enjoyable. But I think around about the time when we got to that farm, we've just started to become a bit like, uh, this hike's kind of done so we're actually not going to go as far as the village and instead we're sticking to these very very quiet country roads and we're just going to take a shortcut back to the car I think. As soon as we got over the ridge and we could see that either lake or reservoir in the background which is obviously what we could just see through the fog and mist this morning our spirits have just lifted and surprise surprise Andy's got out the tripod again and he's taking some photographs and I think as well it really helps that we've just exited countryside that we have really not too much of a drive south of where we are in London back into this kind of heathland full of heather and tors and I guess it's just it's stuff that we don't have on our doorstep in London and so of course as soon as we see this we start to get really really excited whereas I think before I was just like yeah this this, this is what we have in Surrey and I was just a little bit over it but I'm starting to feel a lot more excited again now. I started off today's hike saying that there's a possibility that at the end we would swing by Hen Cloud which is the craggy peak just over there but the way in which I'm feeling at the moment my legs are kind of just screaming at me saying Caroline stop and also my tummy is just saying that it wants me to head to somewhere that's serving food so I think we are just going to go straight back to the car at this point. We got really lucky and snapped up the last indoor table at the Royal Oak where Andy went with the venison burger and onion rings on the side. I opted for the slow cooked tender lamb shank complemented with a load of veggies and for dessert we couldn't resist splitting a Bakewell pudding served with hot custard. So what do you think of today's hike? <laughs> you got in first with the questions and <laughs> yep. you didn't have to be the first one to answer. I'm learning. Um, okay so this hike a real mixed bag. We got incredibly lucky with the weather this morning. The fog was amazing. We were kind of hoping for it because, what is the website that you use? Uh, it's an app called Clear Weather. So Clear Weather, I've just found out about it today and it gives a percentage chance of fog and it had a really high percentage. Yet when we woke up this morning at our hotel all the way out in Chesterfield, it was like blue skies almost. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, as soon as we hit the park, it was really, really thick fog and it just gave such a magical feel to the whole place. And I mean, what were your thoughts on the fog? Yeah, but it was quite heavy driving over here. Um, mm. But it was, yeah, it was fantastic taking photos in it, um, especially when you try to do woodland photography. Mm. Yeah, no, he's right about the driving, trying to drive in that really thick fog, just very exhausting. And then, yeah, when we got up onto the ridge and as the fog started to disperse, the 
blue of the sky was so pretty and you just really felt like you were like up there in in the heavens um and then the, the woods were nice that we walked through to then get to Ludd's church um but then Ludd's church itself you know I've, I've already said it before it was a lot shorter than what I was expecting for it to be it was probably about as busy as I was expecting for it to be given that it was the bank holiday weekend but it was still phenomenal. I would definitely say if anyone is in this area, definitely go up to the Roaches and walk along the, the ridge. Definitely go to, to Ludd's Church. Yeah. Yeah. And there, there were quite a lot of families about as well. So mm. definitely uh, a more family friendly and dog, dog friendly. Oh, yeah, so many um, dogs. <laughs> yeah, hiking. Yeah. 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 And then I think with hindsight, I probably would have rathered yes do the circle around Ludd's church or through Ludd's church and then back along the ridge line that we did walk along but then I think instead of dropping down to the valley to avoid walking along the Roaches ridge line I would have just walked along the Roaches ridge line again because it was really exhausting towards the end and I just I didn't really feel like the rewards were were there no it, it, it just felt like you're walking for the sake of trying to get from a to b yeah. rather than really experiencing anything yeah but that's that's not to put a dampener on the hike it is one that i'd highly recommend i just switch it up ever so slightly yeah yeah still got a couple more days left in the peak district so we will see you guys next sunday when we are doing stanage edge maybe possibly possibly bye bye <laughs>